Today, you're going to test your listening skills so you can better understand fast speaking native English speakers. Welcome back to J4S English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. Here's how this lesson will work. I'm going to say a sentence three times and you need to write down exactly what you hear in the comments. After, I'll explain what I said and I'll explain the pronunciation changes that take place in fast English and I'll explain the advanced vocabulary that I used. Are you ready to get started? Remember, I'll say each sentence three times. That's out of our budget. That's out of our budget. That's out of our budget. Did you get this one? I said, that's out of our budget. Let's talk about the pronunciation changes. Notice that's. This is a contraction of that is, that's. Now we have out of. We can combine these two sounds together and it will sound like outa, outa. That's outa our budget, our, our. Notice the word is our because it's a possessive, our budget, the budget belongs to us, but I pronounce it just as a very unstressed our, our, our budget, our budget. But based on the context, it's obvious that it's not the verb to be, are, and it is in fact our, the possessive. That's out of our budget. Do you know what this means? The expression to be, the verb to be, that is, to be out of one's budget. So we need a possessive here, one's budget. That's another way of simply saying that something is too expensive. The cost exceeds what you're either willing to pay or what you're able to pay. Now, of course, you have a budget for your household and you can often use the expression, oh, sorry, that's out of our budget to say that you're not willing or able to pay for that item. But there's a budget in the workplace, for example, as well. So let's say you wanted a standing desk. So a standing desk is a desk that you're able to raise so you can work at it standing up because it's more comfortable and it's better for you. So you ask your boss, can you buy me a standing desk? But your boss says no. And he might say, oh, sorry, that's out of our budget. So this doesn't necessarily mean the company doesn't have the money to buy you a standing desk but they're unwilling to buy you a standing desk. They don't want to spend the money. So remember, it can be unable because you don't have the money or unwilling. You have the money, but you don't want to spend it on that specific item. Sorry, that's out of our budget. I found one for sale, but it's out of my budget. Do you see a budget? I don't see a budget. Let's try this again with another listening exercise. I'll say it three times. Money's no object. Money's no object. Money's no object. This one was easy, right? I said money is no object. Notice at the beginning here, money's. Money is, this is a contraction, money's. Money's no object. Now it's important that you hear these contractions because they're necessary for grammar. Because the expression is, to be no object. Money is no object. If you don't hear that contraction, then the sentence won't make sense grammatically. This is an expression that means the opposite of what we just learned. If you say money is no object, it means that the cost of something is not a concern or a limitation. So basically you're saying I'm willing to pay any price for this specific item. It's common to use this in specific situations. Maybe it's your husband or your wife, your best friend, your mother's birthday, and it's a very special birthday. So on this specific occasion for planning that special someone's birthday, money's no object. So you might say, can you recommend somewhere special for my husband's birthday? Now, when someone recommends something, 
of course they're going to think about the price. So you can tell the person and money is no object. So they know that they can recommend the most expensive restaurant and you're comfortable with that in this specific situation. Or maybe in our last example, you asked your boss to buy you a standing desk and he said, okay, sure, we'll buy you a standing desk. So you can go into the store and you can say, my boss is paying for this desk, so money's no object. Money's no object, as you probably know. Sure, money's no object. Okay. I told you, money's no object. Let's try this again with another listening exercise. I'll say it three times. I'm beyond livid. I'm beyond livid. I'm beyond livid. I said, I'm beyond livid. For pronunciation, just notice that contraction, I am, I'm, I'm beyond livid. What does livid mean? Well, it's an adjective that means extremely angry. I'm livid. Now, when we add beyond, this is an intensifier. So extremely angry, livid is already very intense, but if you add beyond livid, it makes it 10 times stronger. I'm extremely, extremely angry. I'm beyond livid. Just remember to conjugate that verb to be. So if you're speaking about a past emotion, you could say, I was beyond livid when my boss denied my desk reimbursement. So here, a desk reimbursement is when you pay for something and if you're reimbursed, it means someone gives you that money after, usually your company. But in this case, your boss denied your desk reimbursement, even though in the last example, you bought the most expensive desk because remember, money was no object, but now you have to pay for that very expensive desk. So that's why you were beyond livid. You can use beyond to intensify any emotion, any adjective. She was beyond happy when she passed her IELTS. I'm beyond awful. I'm beyond scared. That is beyond exciting. Let's try this one more time. I'll say it three times. Her comment's been gnawing at me. Her comment's been gnawing at me. Her comment's been gnawing at me. I said her comment has been gnawing at me. In spoken English, it's very common to take that auxiliary verb has and form a contraction with the subject. This is more informal, but it happens most of the time by native speakers in spoken English. Her comments been, her comments been gnawing at me. So you have to hear that auxiliary verb in the contraction, but the sentence structure tells you that the contraction is there because grammatically it's required. Now in written English, it would be more common and proper to say her comment has been gnawing at me. But even if I were to see that in written form, if I were to read it out loud, I would just automatically form that contraction in spoken English. Notice that pronunciation for gnawing, that G is silent. Gnawing, gnawing. Her comments been gnawing at me. What does this mean? The expression is to gnaw at someone. When something gnaws at someone, it means that something really irritates or bothers that person. That something really preoccupies your thoughts, which means you keep thinking about it, you can't get it out of your head. So maybe you were telling your coworker how you bought the most expensive desk because money was no object, or so you thought, but then your boss denied your desk reimbursement and you were beyond livid. You were telling this whole story to your co coworker and instead of sympathy, your coworker said, I told you not to buy the most expensive desk. And that comment, what your coworker said, 
has been gnawing at you, which means you keep thinking about it. It keeps bothering you and irritating you. You can't get it out of your mind, even though it happened hours ago, days ago, or weeks ago. It's been gnawing at you. Something was still gnawing at me. Now it's secretly gnawing away at you. Like, no, no, why, why didn't he? Now let's do an imitation exercise so you can practice your pronunciation and imitate how a native speaker would say each sentence. I'll say each sentence again three times and I want you to repeat that sentence out loud to practice your pronunciation. That's out of our budget. That's out of our budget. That's out of our budget. Money's no object. Money's no object. Money's no object. I'm beyond livid. I'm beyond livid. I'm beyond livid. Her comments been gnawing at me. Her comments been gnawing at me. Her comments been gnawing at me. Did you enjoy this lesson? Do you want me to make more lessons just like this? If you do, then put beyond excited, beyond excited in the comments so I know that you're beyond excited to watch my next video just like this. And if I see that all the students are beyond excited, that will motivate me to make another video. So put beyond excited in the comments. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And why don't you keep improving your English listening skills and vocabulary with this lesson right now.